Hello and welcome to your Active's EU Tweets of the Week. Three major summits head Brussels way, war in Ukraine enters 30th day, and if you want Putin's gas, you'll have to pay in rubles. Another week, another summit, but this time it's three huge summits in one day, with 37 heads of state and government in town, including the US president. Brussels is pretty much on lockdown, reported Dave Keating, most people opting to work from home if they can. Ah yes, the sweet sound of screaming sirens as motorcade after motorcade makes concentrating almost impossible. Celine Schoen was not amused. Carl Bildt pointed out that with the unprecedented situation of a NATO summit, an EU summit and a G7 summit all at once, Putin has managed to bring the democratic world together in a unique way with his aggression. Joe Biden tweeted his thanks to Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo for the warm welcome in Brussels. As well he might, the Brussels Times estimated the cost of the president's visit at a whopping 6.8 million euros for 48 hours. Joe Biden, unimpressed with the mannequin piece, US President asks, is that it, snarked Le Chou. Others were eyeing British PM Boris Johnson doubtfully. How dignified everyone is. And then there is Johnson, looking like he has been pulled from the field mid-harvesting, remarked Veronica Leskova. Bojo's comments during the week comparing the Ukraine war to Brexit have not earned him any friends. Something starkly illustrated in this video. Global Britain indeed. This week also marked a month since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and many shared the heartbreaking images of what has happened in Mariupol, including Alexandra Matvichuk, who said the formerly beautiful city housed 450,000 people who lived in peace before the arrival of the Russian army. Russians will have to answer for everything, she said. This is what it was like one month ago. My heart bleeds, added Jackie Brazil. President Volodymyr Zelensky called on people around the world to show their support for Ukraine. Free people of the world, make yourselves visible in the streets of your cities in support of Ukraine. Let's paint the world yellow and blue, echoed Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuliba. Elsa Kramer shared this from Rotterdam. Will Kurtz, five-year-old, made a flag, and others made the jester in their own original way. On Thursday, Vladimir Putin announced that Russia will start demanding payment for natural gas in rubles. Man, in that case, with the change I have lying around my bedroom, I can buy a lot of Russian gas, said Martin Cross. I can finally use my Monopoly money for my gas bill, joked Ross Goffey. Martini Seltzmeyer couldn't resist throwing some shade Belgium's way. Breaking, Belgium announced it will only pay for Russian gas with bank contact. I guarantee there is a Belgian entrepreneur right now kicking up a Euro token Rupel exchange. They'll probably get a tax loophole for it, added Sam Wilkin. Hey, come on, let's remember who the real bad guys are. That's it for this week. Join me again next Friday for more snarks and larks in the Brussels bubble Twittersphere.